Because how do you kill something that can't possibly be alive? Christine. Yes, I know what you guys are thinking. I am reviewing yet another John Carpenter movie today, but this time it is going to be Christine, the 1983 movie that is starring Keith Gordon, John Stockwell, and Alexandra Paul. The film follows this unpopular nerd named Arnie Cunningham who buys this 1958 Plymouth Fury but his friends soon realize that the car is evil and it's alive and it's starting to quickly take possession of Arnie. So I first watched Christine when I was really young. I, I saw it on TV. It was on the Sci-Fi channel and my parents only let me watch it because all the bad stuff was cut out. The violence, the profanity. I thought when I watched it when I was younger that it was really fun. It was enjoyable. And then when I rewatched it years later I realized that it's still fun, it still holds up, uh, and it's actually not as violent at all, you know, even compared to the version I watched on TV. I personally think that Christine is one of Carpenter's most underrated films. Also I think it's one of Stephen King's most underrated film adaptations. It's funny because this film actually went into production before Stephen King actually finished his novel for it. So it just goes to show that they were trying to make King adaptations so quickly and send it out to the public for everyone to see because he was just marketable. He pulled in a crowd and made a lot of money. The producers wanted Carpenter to direct and he was fresh off of directing The Thing in 1982 uh, which was unfortunately a huge financial failure and critical bomb. Um, it hasn't been till years later where it's become a classic and beloved by most audience members. Needless to say, Carpenter only did this movie for the paycheck. He actually has come on record saying that this was purely just a job for him. He had no creative pleasure or enjoyment making it. It was just a job. And that kind of sucks because like I said, it's one of his most underrated works that no one really talks about as much. After the failure of The Thing, he was afraid Hollywood was just going to push him out. So he knew he needed another big financial success and critical success. A Stephen King adaptation seemed like the most logical thing to do. Carpenter knew that doing a Stephen King adaptation was going to rake in the dough. So he made the movie and it was a huge success financially and critically. You can tell though by Carpenter's direction in the film that he was playing it safe. Everything about this movie actually feels like they're playing it safe. Like I'll say it's a breezy fun watch but there's not really much substance behind it all. What really elevates this movie is Keith Gordon's performance, and thank God he got casted because he wasn't the studio's first choice. They first wanted Scott Bayo, and then eventually went to Kevin Bacon, who turned down the role because he had Footloose to do instead. Watching this movie, you can't see anybody else in the role because Keith Gordon plays a nerdy, unpopular guy so well, and even his eventual transition into this arrogant, kind of confident evil dude seems more believable than Kevin Bacon just being this nerdy guy. Because I love me some Kevin Bacon, but he, he doesn't come across as a nerd. This movie isn't that scary, but Keith Gordon's performance makes it a lot creepier for sure. John Stockwell is also in the movie, and he was also in Top Gun, um, so I don't know if a lot of you knew that, but uh, John Stockwell is good. Um, I think a lot of people could say that his role could have been played by really anybody, but what I think he brings to it is the sensitivity to this jock archetype that audiences of the 80s and at the time just weren't used to. Alexandra Paul was also in the movie, and I found out that this was actually her first movie role, which is pretty cool. Um, she does pretty good in the movie as Arnie's girlfriend. Sometimes everyone's acting in the movie can kind of come off as 80s horror movie acting, if that makes any sense. 
but it's fun, so who cares? Speaking of 80s, I think this has got to be one of the most 80s movies I have ever seen with the hair, the clothing, the music. So if you like throwback 80s nostalgia, which like every young person does now, um, especially with Stranger Things out, but uh, I think you'll really enjoy this movie. Carpenter's score is up there for one of his best scores that he's ever put to one of his films. Uh, it just has a very memorable sound to it, in my opinion. And like the car, Christine, this movie feels very alive and has a lot of energy to it. it. has a good pace. It doesn't really stick with you like The Exorcist or like The Thing will, but it's a solid addition in John Carpenter's filmography. And this movie has some of the coolest scenes, like... So spoilers um, if you haven't seen Christine, but uh, there is a scene where a bunch of these assholes destroy Christine. They, you know, they hit the, they beat the shit out of it, basically. So Arnie's watching Christine all busted up, and Christine starts to self-heal, I guess you could say, um, and get all the dents out. And how they actually went about doing that was they put compressors in the vehicle and uh, to make it all kind of compress. And then they played the footage in reverse to kind of make it look like it was expanding and going back to normal, which I think is pretty cool. It's a nice little touch. Do I think this is a perfect movie? No. A lot of the qualities do come off as cheesy and kind of dated, but I think it is a very underrated movie and I think it's highly overlooked, which is why I recommend you guys go see it. Um, or go stream it, I guess. I'm gonna give the movie three and a half out of five stars. Thank you guys again for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next episode of 31 Days of Horror.